<clears throat> so let's look at this problem. Uh, we've got this link, A, B, C. Uh, it's guided by two blocks that's, that move in the fixed slot. So, so you see that point A <clears throat> has to be going down that slot. Point B is, is going down that slot. The velocity of A is downward at 2 meters per second. Determine the velocity of B at the instant theta is equal to 45. All right, so obviously we're in the section for relative velocity, but if we didn't know that we were in that section of relative velocity, this would be a good <clears throat> time to use that relative velocity method. Why? Because this pin is not just in pure rotation. You know, if it was just purely rotating about point B, uh, then we could use V equals R omega to find, to find things like that. <clears throat> so it's not in pure rotation. And it's kind of almost like you're, you're jumping from one point on the rigid body to another point on the same rigid body. So that's a good time to use our relative velocity method. <clears throat> so if I'm going from uh, kind, of, kind of, I know about point A, I want to know about point B, then I'd use relative velocity of point A and B. Now you could, you could do A slash B or B slash A, but you've got to stay consistent. You've got to stay consistent. <clears throat> I tend to uh, start with the point, I like to start with the point that I know the least about on the left-hand side of my equation. That's just how I do these. So I would do VB equals VA <clears throat> plus VB slash A, and then immediately rewrite this as what? Omega cross R B slash A. Omega of the rigid body. So there we go. VB equals VA plus VB slash A. <clears throat> and then just plug in, you know, things that we know. Plug in things that we know. All right. <clears throat> what do we know? Uh, well, let's start. I know the most about A. Uh, you know, that is negative 2 in the J. Be careful. This is a vector. You know, if use your I's and J's, positives and negatives. <clears throat> because we're doing a cross product, we're letting the math do these directions. We need to stick with our usual x, y axes. <clears throat> so know that V A is negative 2. Omega, do I know the rotation? How many radians per second this rigid body is rotating? I, I don't know that. I don't know that. But <clears throat> I do know it's in the k direction. Now, it might be positive k, it might be negative k, but I know it's in the k direction because this is a two dimensional problem right? This is a two-dimensional problem. If our rigid body is in 2D in the XY plane, then its angular information is in the Z direction. It's in the K direction. <coughs> so I don't know it, but I'm going to go ahead and plug in a K in there. I tend to guess positive K. You know, if my answer comes out negative, then it was, uh, you know, negative K rotation. And do I know this um, R, B slash A? R, B slash A is a position vector from A to B. Well, yeah, I mean, it's just on the figure. It's just on the figure, point two. And we're going to do these <clears throat> just at this instant. Um, so go ahead and plug in 45 degrees. You know, point two, cosine 45, point two, sine 45. So if this is 45 degrees, <clears throat> then that R um, from... A to B. Well, we'll plug that in in just a second. So, all right. Uh, uh, oh, uh, but go ahead. Do what do we know about B? Do we know the velocity of B? No, that's what we're trying to find. <coughs> but do we know something about B? We know that it is confined along this slot. I don't know its velocity, but I know it is in the I direction. I know it's in the I direction. Many times you can tell what direction it's in. <clears throat> but I'm just going to say I, it could be positive I, it could be negative I, but I know it's in that I direction. So let's start plugging things in. Uh, VB, I don't know it, but I know all of it is in the I direction. VA is negative 2 in the J. And then this VB such A is omega <coughs> BA cross with R. So uh, plus omega of AB or BA or ABC, the omega of the rigid body, <clears throat> go ahead and plug in that K. Cross with R from A to B. So from A to B, <clears throat> this vector right there from A to B, point 2, sine 45 in the I, <clears throat> and then point 2, cosine 45 in the negative J. Be careful with that negative there, positive negative. 
<coughs> so there's my equation. I have one unknown over here and one unknown over here, and it's okay because, you know, it's really two equations, an I equation and a J equation. <coughs> so let's do this cross product. All right, so if I want to do this cross product, you can do this a number of ways. You can do determinants. Um, I'm just going to cross this one first, and then I'm going to cross this one. It's like distributing this, kind of multiplying this through, but I'm crossing this through. <coughs> so this first one, uh, go ahead and, and multiply together uh, what's in front of those uh, unit vectors. So go ahead and multiply this point to sine 45 and the omega AB. And now I need to decide what is the unit vector. Is this in the I, J, K? Uh, <clears throat> so now let me cross K cross with I. So I mentioned it earlier, but uh, um, if you, you need to kind of memorize these cross products, I draw this little circle here. And if I'm going kind of in alphabetical order, I to J, J to K, K to I, <clears throat> then it's positive. So I cross J is positive K. J cross K is positive I. Oops. K cross I is positive J. <clears throat> and so that's what we have right here. We have K cross I is positive J. So I put a J there. It's positive J. And then I, I look in front. Are, are there any other positives or negatives? Uh, it's, it's all. There are no negatives. So <clears throat> this is positive J. So I uh, just wanted to get rid of that. No, I didn't want to get rid of that. There we go. So this is positive J. All right, now let me cross this one. So first let me do the numbers, 0 0.2 cosine 45 times omega AB, and then K cross J. You know, if we did this circle again, I, J, K, K cross J would be negative I. So I put the I there. And I would have a negative due to the K cross J. But I also have this negative right here. Two negatives make a positive. Two negatives make a positive. So make sure you can do the K cross I is positive J. But K cross J is negative I. And then see if there are any, any other negatives in there. So let's break this up into its I and its J. <clears throat> so that we can... Um, <clears throat> so that we can solve for our two unknowns. So my I equation, on the left-hand side, the only thing in front of the I's is VB. And then what do I have in front of the I? 0. 0.2 cosine 45 omega AB. That one equation has two unknowns, so let me jump to my next equation. For the J's, I've got nothing on the left-hand side. Negative 2 plus 0. 0.2 sine 45 Omega A. So th this equation only has one unknown. So go ahead and solve Omega A B. Fourteen point one. All right. So it came out as positive fourteen point one. What does that mean? What does that positive mean? That positive means I chose correctly, and I guessed it was in the <clears throat> I guessed it was in the positive K. So yes, this is in the positive K. And positive K, you can either put positive K or you can put um, counterclockwise. So this is. 14.1 um, radians per second, counterclockwise. Go back, plug that in right there. <clears throat> I would get VB is 2 meters per second. That positive means I guessed correctly. I guess in the positive I, it's 2. All right, so <clears throat> it's, it's you know, A was 2, B was 2. This is a special case. <clears throat> it definitely won't always come out to be the same. Why might, why did this come out to be the same? Maybe probably because it's a 45 degree angle. Um, but, you know, this is the process, right? This is the process. We use this VB equals VA plus VB slash A and rewrite that VB slash A as omega cross R because I know that relative velocity term inside of A <clears throat> for two points on the same rigid body is omega cross R. Be careful. I did uh, B, A, B slash A. You know, so that's why my B slash A was from A to B. That's why this was from A to B, a vector from A down to B. And then plug everything I know. Don't forget to go ahead and plug in what you know about the point that you're trying to solve for. 
I didn't know the velocity would be, but I did know that it was all in the I direction. Um, so go ahead and plug in its I and J um, if you know its direction. Then do this cross part correctly, knowing K cross I and K cross J. And then solve for your two unknowns. If you have more than two unknowns <coughs> in this equation, then you missed something. You know, if you have more than two unknowns in this equation, you can't solve for it just using this relative velocity method. Maybe go back and ask yourself, did I know the direction of something? Did I know, you know, what, what did I miss right there? <coughs> All right, so that, that was the answer to meters per second um, in the I direction. Now, it, it didn't ask this, but I, I think I want to, and I should have asked this. What about the velocity of C? What, what if I ask, what is the velocity of C? So let's think about this. If we have enough room here, we might go to the next page. What is the velocity of C? Well, I can use relative velocity <coughs> to jump from A to C or to jump from B to C or uh, something like that. Uh, so I could either I could go from A to C or B to C. I should get the same answer. Uh, so let me go from uh, B to C. So I would, they're still on the same rigid body. So I would use the relative velocity method. I like to start with the point that is <clears throat> that I know the least about. And so I don't know the velocity of C equals V B plus V C slash B. And this is omega cross with R. C slash B. This would be an R from B to C. And this would be an R from B to C. This one, CB is also AB, is also ABC. This is just the um, angular velocity <coughs> of that rigid body, which I found was 14.1 in the K, which I found was 14.1 in the K. All right. <coughs> Do I know anything about this velocity of C? No. Do I know its direction? No, 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 no. Try not to assume things unless you're positive. Earlier, we knew the direction of point B because it was it, it was in that slot. But point C is out there. It's, I don't know, it's kind of going, I don't know, maybe up here, up and out. Um, <clears throat> I don't know that. And so I'm going to say I don't know anything about VC. I don't know its I. I don't know its J. And if you don't know anything, these are my two unknowns right here. These are my two unknowns. And in one equation, I can only solve for two unknowns. So I better know everything else on the right-hand side of this equation to solve for a point that you don't know anything about. Did you get that? If you're trying to solve for a point that you don't know its direction and you don't know its magnitude, then those are your two unknowns. And so you have to, you have to um, know everything over here on the right-hand side. So <coughs> here's, here's what will happen. Sometimes, sometimes it may not ask for the velocity of B. It might, it might go straight and, and ask for the velocity of point C, right? So what if this problem... Had, had just gone straight ahead and asked, what is the velocity of C? You could not go straight from A to C because you would have too many unknowns. You, you would need to find the angular velocity of the rigid body first before you can go to C. Did you get that? If I tried to go right away from A to C, Without doing what we did for the first half of this problem, without solving for that 14.1, I'd have three unknowns. I wouldn't know this omega, and I wouldn't know the i and the j component of Vc. So sometimes, <clears throat> even if it didn't ask for b, I would need to go from a to b, because I know the direction of b, in order to solve for this omega right here. And then I could go from a to c, or then I could go from b to c, because now I know this omega right here. So let me go ahead and kind of finish this out. <clears throat> the velocity of B is uh, 2i plus omega I do know is positive 14.1k cross with this r 
<coughs> and this is from B to C. So look at that at this instant from B to C. It's at a 45 degree angle. 0.1 cosine 45 in the I. 0.1 sine 45 in the J. All right. And then cross that. So let's see. So what do we have in the I direction? I don't know. Well, sorry. I don't really need to separate this, do I? Um, because this is what I'm looking for. Let me just do all the math that's on the right-hand side of the equation. I've got 2i. All right. When I cross this one, I would have 14.1 times 0.1 cosine 45. And k crossed with i is positive j, and there's no other negatives, so it's positive j. All right. And then when I cross this one, 14.1. 0.1 sine 45, um, and k cross j is negative i, and then I have another negative. So if I've got two negatives, then that's why this is a positive. All right, and so then I could add the i's together, keep the j right there. I would get um, 3i plus 1j. Yeah, it's a velocity of C. Need some units here. Meters per second. So if you want the magnitude of that or the direction of that, <coughs> you could find that. But, but do you see how if you want to know the velocity of C, you might have to do an intermediate step and find the velocity of V and the angular velocity of the rigid body in order to go out to that point that you don't know anything about. You don't know the direction or the velocity of point C. And don't assume things. Don't assume uh, this looks like the, it's at a 45 degree angle. It is not up here. We, we just calculated it was 3 in the I, 1 in the J.